What is up, y'all? So this is going to take as long as it takes. We tried the live stream last week, and it was a absolute disaster. You know, it makes me wonder now. I've always, you know, thought, like, why don't people do live streams more often, right? It's so much easier, right? Because a lot of people, they'll go, get online after they, not online, but after they shoot their videos, they edit them and then post them at a later date. And I was like, man, that is so much extra work. And now at this point, I'm like, maybe it's because their computer's not strong enough because mine isn't. I'd much rather do lives. And then eventually I've noticed that people, content creators eventually start progressing on a live. So um, yeah, it takes money. Like you gotta have a strong enough computer to handle all the internet stuff. So anyway, sorry guys, we're gonna have to do it this way instead of live. Um, if there's a chat, you know, make sure you comment in there. You know, I definitely read almost everything, you know, always looking to get better. So we're going to talk about our two topics today. The first one is being disrespectful in sports. Now, excuse me, being disrespectful in sports, let's turn this volume up a little bit, is essential. Being disrespectful is essential to the lifeblood of any sport. All right. Think about swimming. Just anything that's popped in swimming and like that's translated into like your neighbor talking about something or people at school or whatever. It's usually something something disrespectful happened, right? When that um, Aussie chick was talking trash about the cowbell, infernal cowbell, however she said it, very bad Aussie impersonation. Like I remember, I think it might have been Cody Miller. Somebody like said something. His his neighbor said something to him about it. And he's like, oh, that never happens. And it's just like, duh. Like, swimming is a extremely boring sport. All right, and that's one thing, too. Like, we got to, swimming community, swimming community, listen to me. We got to be real about this shit, okay? We look at a black line all day, and what is exciting, or what we're trying to make exciting, is people watching people look at a black line all day. Think about that. That's not fun. All right. Any real one will tell you we're not capping on the Internet for Swim Swam or Swimming World or an interview, whatever it is, NBC, MSNBC, AOL, Yahoo, whatever. It is not fun out there. Jump in a cold pool. Basically, you're a masochist to get your ass kicked by your coach <laughs> for two hours, you know, deteriorate your body so you can have an effective taper. And you basically are doing all of this to swim fast two times a year or be an optimal uh, performance two times a year, maybe three if you're lucky, right? So there's nothing fun about that. Right now, there's obviously some advancements. I know with our content, our paid for content, um, I don't have it here. That's, you know, you know what? Let me see if I can, let's fix that. Boom. There we go. All right, with our paid for content, you know, let's clean this up a little bit. Right here, the Olympic sale. Let's see if I pick the right arm. There we go. With our sale there, like the content in there, when I mastered that technique stuff for the freestyle, the anchoring, the catch, actually catching onto something where it feels like your hand is on a solid and moving your body actually past that solid so the hand doesn't move through the water. Literally, it can be done. All right, imagine what I'm saying. Your hand is on a solid, but it's in a fluid. You're going to swim faster than a lot of people. But when I figured this out, it felt like I was lifting weights in the pool. Not lactic acid. It didn't feel like lactic acid. It felt like my muscles were failing. Like I was doing bench press and my muscles weren't firing anymore. And I couldn't go for more than a 25. Granted, I put paddles on. I was pulling. And I like tried to get my tempo up at max pull and see how far I could go. So I really exacerbated the amount of work my muscles were going to have to do. But I only made it, I made it a 25 and then it was like my muscles were dead. And then I tried to keep going. And I could only go like another 12 yards. While my arms were dead, like fried. I couldn't, it just, they didn't feel like anything was firing. Um, so it's like, okay, I just went 37 yards and I'm like, my muscles are war. Obviously, like I said, I kind of overexerted myself to just see what would happen. But I think that alone changes everything about training, right? Like if I wore my muscles out that fast to the point where I literally could not train anymore, you can obviously stretch that out longer into more efficient sets like, you know, Eddie Reese's coaching style. That's my uh, barometer. 
Um, but yeah, if you can do that, you don't need to be in there two hours. You can probably get everything you need done in an hour, maybe less, right? And like I said, I wore my muscles out. It felt like I had lifted. And at least, I'm not going to say that, that's insider trading. Hook them. You know, you can't tell you that secret. But um, if you're doing that in the water and lifting, you don't need doubles under the insider trading. But anyway, um, why is all this important? You know, my, my ADD be getting on me sometimes, guys. Um, content. It'll come back to me. Um, but anyway, so, oh, I can't remember it. Oh, wait, nope, it's coming back to me. We were talking about, it was content. That came from talking about content creators, talking trash, being honest with ourselves. Uh, the future of the sport. Okay, that's how we got here. Um, the future of the sport, like, you need personalities. And... You know, I think, you know, I'm trying to lead the way. You know, I'm on a world, you know, Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, Sea to Shining Sea. Y'all know about that. Alexander the Great's goal was Sea to Shining Sea, Mediterranean to um, uh, the Atlantic. That's Asia, right? Atlantic Ocean? Pacific? Pacific Ocean. Yeah, Pacific Ocean. Sea to Shining Sea. So shout out to the, you know, my brethren, you know, Daxander, Alexander. But, um, yeah, so, and this is how it all comes together, the future of the sport. Swimming, like, we're looked at as a soft sport, one more in the water, which doesn't help us at all. <laughs> um, and everybody's just so nice, so cordial. Just everybody's nice with each other, or always my Team USA teammate. You know, I'm trying to decide if I want to go full-blown Dax or if we're trying to keep it PG-13. You know, we'll figure that out. We'll put a poll up or something eventually and figure out what uh, the people want. But, yeah, yo, you got you to gotta ditch that. You got to ditch that, man. You got to ditch that. All right? Now, I'll tell you my strategy right now because I, I know the game. <laughs> I know that the world, and definitely America, loves a good old-fashioned black versus white battle. They love that shit. They eat it up. So, in my mind, I'm like, okay, Phelps is the big dog. I can get my two free up to that level. I can I can definitely play it up. And I, there's an interview where I say with Swim Swim, I was like, when you get to the Olympic final, or not the Olympic final, the uh, Olympic trials final, like, it's just who wants it the most. Like, you got to be two people to make a team. Like, you got to be two people. That's all heart, <laughs> okay? You could... Coast the whole thing and then gas the last 50. And you just got to make sure you're striking distance to beat two people. All right. That's all hard. So I had like, you know, I was laying the breadcrumbs. But um, yeah, you do that. You start talking, talking that hot shit. You know, get the media to stir it up. And then you got eyes. You know, and I had all, I had all the moves. Like Cohen will tell you. I remember one time we were joking with him and I was like, I pulled the uh, men in black on him. I was like, look, old and busted. New hotness. I was like 24 at the time. So, yeah, man, look, you know, I, the game's got to change. We got to stop being so soft. Soft. That's what it is. We got to stop being so soft. It's competition. Okay? We're here competing. I am not your friend. I'm not here to beat your friend. I'm here to kill your dreams. Okay? Like, that's what it is. And then people like, yo, that's the game. That's the game. I have a dream to be number one. You have a dream to be number one. And you're trying to trample on my dream. That's disrespectful. We are enemies right now. So it's just like, people got to be real with themselves if we want the sport to grow, you know. But I'll tell you what, I put all these ideas out there. There's somebody who's very famous in the swimming world. I put my idea out there. He only hasn't commented on it once. So it's just like, this sport just doesn't get it. They don't get it. No swag. <sighs> anyway, so we're going to talk about this talking stuff, shit stuff. And we're going to look at, this is where it all comes to, uh, point one, right? The future of the sport, being nice, you got to start talk, popping your shit, dude. And, you know, eating that uh, humble sandwich with that egg on your face if you lose and, you know, walk it, talk it and walk it, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's what people love to see. You know, they love to see a confident, confident cat out there popping that shit and then backing it up, making people eat words, you know what I'm saying? So that's what the sport needs. Like, if you want to get eyes on the sport, you want to get because, like, the people who pay for advertising dollars to uh, put shows on TV ain't trying to monetize our small sport. 
They're trying to get the eyeballs of the world to watch the sports so they can run ads and make money. So if you can't get the eyeballs of the world, because swimming is a very small population, especially in the U.S. where they really don't care about it, okay? If you can't get eyeballs of the normal populace who watch sports, basketball, football, soccer, if you can't get that flavor and somehow figure out how to manifest that in swimming, we're people are beating a dead horse. It's embarrassing. Step your game up. But anyway, so let's get into this first video. Right, so... Uh, we're gonna watch the end so we can start seeing what I'm talking about talking trash. All right, so this was a from our um, on our paid for content. This is the race analysis we did. It's one of my favorite races. Josh Prino switching from distance per stroke breaststroke to and when I um, sprint breaststroke timing, which is based on when the kick finishes in sprint breaststroke, ideally. And some of this is Dr. G at USA Swimming Headquarters. Shout out to him. He told us some stuff about when the deceleration happens is when the pool should be happening. And if you did that, you'd be doing like the water bug breaststroke you see in summer league. So it's like, okay, well, how can I get that but not break the rules of hitting your line, right? Competing the kick um, and all that. And, you know, we made it because that's what we do at Rakeley. Oh, man, I'm missing my uh, – can we get it up? Do I have it? I don't have it here. That's what we do at Rakeley. But – um. The kick ideally should be finishing at the same time the arms reach full extension, right? Whereas distance per stroke, you're going to be fully extended and then you're starting your kick as your before your face hits the water, ideally using that kick to push the head in the water. And he switches on to it in the back half of the race and it's just awesome to watch. And eventually, you know, my competitor starts coming out and I start talking, popping that shit. I start talking, I start talking crazy. Because this is what happens, bro. Like you watching the film, like I imagine like when I'm talking to this, it's like, I'm sitting in the room with Will and Kevin, and it's like we watch a film, and we just it's just like, yo, like what is going on here, guys? Like, did you not watch your film? Did you not know that this is what he goes out in, and you need to be switching your game up to make sure that you can be in striking distance and be fresh, and you know that Prino is going to switch to sprint breaststroke timing and get his tempo down to a one one while you're running out of gas at a one five. If you're not training for this every day to be able to handle him coming home like a freight train. You deserve to lose. Like that's like that's my brain. It's like I'm in film session with these guys and I'm on their ass. So lack of attention to detail is kind of it's, it's pathetic is the right word. Okay, so Lacone, we're at a one five still. Yeah, he's gonna lose. And you can start, like, you just look at the tempo, you can just see how strategy or the lack of thereof is happening. All right, so we look at everybody still. Look at these two guys, because obviously everyone else is falling off. You start to see Prina's plan. And, you know, maybe it's an accident, right? Just looking at the film, <laughs> we can see everybody else's accident, so. But we. I'm going to jump forward a little bit. I kind of look at what their heels are doing. I think his rest are getting reckless again. It's easier to catch it mathematically because diagonal is just a combination of a lot down and maybe more this way, right? And that changes the angle depending on how much, how great this is or how great this is, right? So even though he's coming down on this incline, that is a value here. So if you can just get that kick timed correctly, you can catch this value and add them together, right? But if you let them hit the water, this forward value zeroes out because of drag, and pretty much you have whatever this is, the air fighting against that, and you only have your kick. So just like the benefits of getting this timing down right, like of course Prino is going to smoke these guys out. Right? And now we can see, look at his kick. About halfway through his kick, boom. And then I think by the time the rate gets to the end, we end up with his kick almost finishing at the same time his arms fully extend. Let's get a tempo real quick. Facing the water. And his, his tempo is dramatically increasing right now, so it might be a little different than what it was earlier. One, he's at 1-1. One, one. And I believe Prino was at like a 1-8 at the beginning of the race, or a 1-6. 
Last 50, he's coming home to 1-1. One, one. Like, you're going to lose that battle every time. I talk about that next, too, I think. Right? And I think, and see, and that's why this stuff is so important to get these details right. Because it's not just propulsion, right? It's forward momentum. So, yeah, maybe he's not gliding as long and his arms are dead and his kicks are dead. But whatever he's getting out of the kick, he's combining it with this. So he's getting into this advantage more frequently than everybody else. Whereas they're not even having the advantage. They're only getting into this, a weakened kick, and they're doing it less frequently. Like, you got to understand how just the math of that stroke is just... And on top of him having nine fresh strokes at all out where these guys don't, like, these guys were... What does Blade say? Somebody always wants to skate up... Uh, I skate uphill. And I love watching this race. Because it's just like, this is the, where the sport is headed... We're there now, you know, it'll be another 15 years just because people are ignorant. And, you know, they'd rather be right and lose than be wrong and win. So it'll be a long time before everybody else is. But you need to have different skills, right? Like, you need to have, if I was this guy, I'm going all out arms, which I know Lacone definitely has this skill. He has an amazing pull. I'm going all out arms, and I'm not using, I'm barely using any legs. I'm just trying to stay close. Like, look, uh, Prino did in the first, my bad, Prino's right here. Prino did in the first hundred. And I'm doing, wearing out my arms. And then once my arms go on, when I start building, I go, I bring in my kick, and now I'm doing two second glides with all out kicks, fresh legs. And then once my legs start failing, then I switch over to sprint timing and take advantage of this force. Because I know, because I watch film, that nobody else is going to do it because they're ignorant. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little, my competitive juice is starting to flow. And that's when I start getting disrespectful. So we're just, you're around a bunch of idiots. People who don't watch film, people who are not committed to victory. And this is just the world. They say showing up is half the battle. Showing up to watch film is half the battle. It's the whole battle in this case. If I know that Pre knows this is his strategy, I can prepare for it in my training. If I know that these two guys do not have the ability to switch, I can prepare for it in my training. Right? If I know that his going out tempo is a 2-0 and mine is a 1-8, and I know I'm not going to keep up with him, then I'm going to figure out how to go 2-0, save energy, and have the same, dis- and have the same uh, disadvantage be created. So obviously, if he did the same 2-0, he'd be further behind. But can I go 2-0 and keep this the same so I can save energy? Right? Like, the level of idiocracy that goes on in a sport is incredible when you really break down and think about it. We're just going to get disrespectful and talk about it and be real. Because that's what it is. As a competitor, like, if I saw this... I am seeing this. <laughs> this is how I honestly feel about this. Like, you're dumb. And, you know, hey, people were there watching this film, Kevin and uh, Will, I'd sit there and say the same thing to you, to your face. You're dumb. You can't make these mistakes, man. You should have been watching the film. Why are you not watching film? So it's just like you can see the skills. You can see how important they are. Now, maybe this was an accident by him. It doesn't look like it. Because his kick was finishing significantly earlier. So shout out to Josh. I know I talked to him. I tried to get him to rep my brand. He said he had somebody doing stuff for him. I don't think it's like on level of what we're doing. Because um, we're definitely an outlier. And, you know, you think outliers are rare. Maybe he's one of the rare ones. But you just watching this race, I wouldn't be surprised if he watches film. A lot of film. So shout out to Josh. But yeah, like the sport is filled with this type of stupidity, guys. So... Use the content, take advantage of it, have fun. Have fun. And what I mean is... Oh my God. Oh. What a disaster. So I didn't record any of that. So guys, I just rambled on about so much good stuff and it didn't even record because my microphone was off. So another error. I'm learning, guys. Got to jump in the deep. Got, got to jump in the deep end with two feet. Um, but in a, in just because I'm not going to run it back all the way is the, the culture of our sports got to change. We got to start stop being so nice to each other. Um, you think about guys like Jordan and all of that, like they weren't trying to be buddy, buddy. They're trying to win, right? Like you think about the ultimate champions, like they're not afraid to get in your face and insult you. If that's what it takes to get you fired up and to change and do what needs to be done. Right. And 
like when I'm talking reckless and they're like, I'm being competitive. And it's like, if I know that you can do more to be better and we're trying to win and you have a glaring weakness that if we run into another cure like me is going to take advantage of, I refuse to like let you do it because you're going to end up doing something stupid that's going to cost us and I'm going to have to lose because you didn't do your job. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I'd rather you hate me than us lose. Right? And if we win and we're all happy, then you're going to be mad. Blank you. That's how I feel. If you don't like the way I say it and you're not going to change it, change what you're doing. And you're like, oh, you're mean, Dax. So I'm mean because I know up to my standards, there's some, you have a glaring weakness in your game that you're not taking care of. Right? And I'm trying to piss you off so bad to the point that you will change it. But because I'm doing that, you don't like me. You're soft. And in that case, like, <laughs> you. Still trying to figure out if I want to be PG-13 or not. But that's how I feel. Like, if, if you're wrong and your response isn't to get mad and, like, fight back, you're weak to me. If... I know you're doing something incorrect. And when I say it, even if you don't like the way I say it, you know that it's incorrect. I don't care. We don't have, to, we're not friends. I'm not there to be your friend. I'm there to win. And that's the thing like about the sport where it's like separate the game from life. I might even want to be your friend because I know that's your character. How you do one thing is how you do everything, but most of the people in our sport aren't like that. So, like, you can be an aggressive a-hole competitor and be friends after. And if you if you can't, like, what? You're so caught up in trying to be liked that you forgot to win? What? And that's like when I don't know if this got recorded, but when Michael Phelps is like saying like we team USA underperformed even though they won the medal count it's like it's not um it's not the fact it's not the medals it's the attitude we look soft mentally we don't look like I, I didn't even watch the games because it's just like eh, eh, eh. ain't really nothing to watch no personality just uh, just quiet uh, just flying on the radar like I need some bombastic Need some showmanship. Make me want to watch it. Show me, give me some personalities. Talk that shit. You know, rile somebody up. Right? At the end of the day, sports are entertainment. Where is the showmanship? Stop trying to be liked. Being a villain's way more fun. <laughs> be a super villain. Talk that shit. Study. <laughs> and then back it up. But yeah, it's just like, we don't look like, we look at a team that's like, this is a great example actually. We look like second place is okay. That's what Team USA looked like. That's the vibe I got. And that's even, honestly, it's just downstream from this, you know, uh, what's it called? Participation trophy. Like, we're just happy to be there. I'm just happy to get on the podium. Man, I'm trying to win. Right? That second place, third place stuff is for after you retire and you like getting depressed because you didn't win and then eventually you realize like, man, I was number two in the world out of 8 billion people. Like I had an amazing career. That's what that's for. And at that point, it's like if you're eighth place in the final, you're eighth out of X amount of billion people in the world. Like you really tripping over a silver medal versus eighth. It's all the same loss, right? You're out there to compete. You compete to win. You don't compete to be the first loser. Like, what? And that's what he's, it was, that's the, our attitude is like, we're okay with losing. Like, I'd rather, and this is the thing, like, oh my God, just so much fake. I'm about to like actually get into it again. The fakeness. Like, I don't know how you can get second place and be okay with it. I don't, I, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, especially when you have a chance to like, win or actually medal or not medal but 
like you have a chance to win and like you didn't do what it took to win like you were scared you, you swam your own race knowing it wasn't going to help you win like sometimes you go for it and you lose but oh man i don't know man that's that's called bravery i believe but or cowardice however you want to you know depending on how the person goes after it but i i agree phelps shout out you called it i i i didn't even watch for that exact same reason so anyway, the second thing we're going to get into, the Dibbler case, the um, YouTube page that I got this from is Melanie King. Um, so shout out to her. I haven't seen it, so we're going to go through it together. I think it's like a 20 minute long video. Let me look. 10 minutes. Right. So we're going to watch it together. We'll give my reaction. The reason why I wanted to do this. So it's Tuesdays, right? I'm obviously doing some Wednesday, you know, I'm a new, new to the YouTube, the streaming game and I'm inconsistent. Um, but yeah, Tuesdays is going to be just whatever I want to talk about. Fridays will be swimming news, you know, give the, the cool, the new version of the future of swimming, how we talk about the news, um, on Fridays, but yeah, Tuesdays we'll talk about whatever, you know, just swimmers who are normal people talking about things that are happening in the world and in our lives and you know the diddler one is a kind of a big one and but the reason why i want to talk about it is as a coach second order and third order thinking like i call it npc behavior is running crazy in the swim streets crazy and i know if you're a coach like you're probably seeing it right well you'll give an instruction and the kid's like what do you mean and it's like yo i gave you the instructions like just like, what do you mean? And what they're doing is they don't want to be wrong. So they're asking for the end result that you think, that they think you think you want, right? So you could be giving them a drill, right? And they're like, okay, well, what do you mean about the drill? Like, give them the mental picture of what it's supposed to look like so they don't mess up. And it's like, no, no, like, go do the drill. And they're like, I don't understand. Because they're like, I don't know, conditioned is the right word. I don't know what it is, what's the right word is. But they're thinking like, I hear your instructions. I understand the steps. But when I do that, it's supposed to do this. Like, what, what is the this that you want me to do? And it's just like, no. And it's like, basically, they want you to think for them instead of them thinking for themselves and figuring it out. They just want you to give them the answer. It's NPC behavior. Like, no, use your brain. And to the point, right, where I remember this one kid I had, I had to sit at me, stopped at the, like, we were in the middle of a one-on-one -on -one and it was just going so bad. And we stopped, it was 20 minutes and we stopped. We didn't, we didn't do any more swimming. And I literally sat there with him on the side of the pool and we went over like how to have an internal dialogue. And I told him like, you gotta be, you can't be afraid to look crazy. And I was like, there's times where like when I'm thinking, I think I did it too. Or, yeah, I did when I was trying to think about uh, what I was thinking about. Where I start talking to myself out loud, trying to, like, jumpstart my brain. And I literally had to, like, almost yell at him, like, say it out loud. Say it out loud. Say it. Say it. And then he would be, uh, 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 what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Until it hit. Until he, it clicked. And he figured out. He remembered what he was supposed to do. And I was like, give me the instructions. And he would say it. And then he would say like half in and then he'd be like lost again. And I was like, all right, now the next step is you start saying words that you think are next. It's like, what do you mean? And it's just like, oh, like, oh, you see what I'm saying? Like, what do you mean? Like, he wants me to think for him about what I mean instead of just doing it and figuring it out and figuring out like what I mean while following the instructions. All right. So eventually he just starts saying words. And I was like walking through it. Okay. Like these are like everything I'm saying to him. I'm like, you need to be saying these things to yourself when you're thinking. And it was like, okay, like what stroke are we working on? Freestyle. Okay. What's the, what a drill are we working on? I don't know. All right. Well, what's the yell out drills that we've done today, right? Start with just words. And eventually he just like pieced together words. And once he got like two or three of the words, he was able to answer his own question about what the drill was. And then at that point he was able to like, he said the right word, put the drill together and then boom, rattled off the rest of it. And it's like, okay, like that's how you think. And you know how these little kids do. They give you this like coy little like hidden smile where it's like yo it's okay to be happy that you just became sentient <laughs> like it's okay to be happy about your accomplishments like don't hide it man celebrate yourself 
But yeah, man, like, so we get to this, right? So with this Diddler stuff, I guess I'm saying that. <laughs> uh, with the P. Diddy stuff, Sean Combs, Mr. Combs, Mr. Sean John. It it's second so with his arrest there's like second and third order things that are happening right so this is about like how to look at a situation and this even goes to like the you know what I'm saying that we happened in uh, 2020 that uh, put us all in uh, country jail if you know what I'm saying city jail um, where if you're able to like when something happens there's certain like from that only so many things could happen after that right and as you go through each one you realize like okay if this thing happens these things can happen but this one can't happen unless this thing happens too but if both of them happen then now we have this can happen this group of things can happen but now there's also some other things that happen in combination because this thing and this thing together create a third order consequence right so man i gotta get through i gotta stop looking at my armpits Jeez, sorry guys but um yeah it's understanding like how situations can create second and third order consequences. So this, it's like, okay, he, you know, P. Diddy got arrested. So it's like, okay, from that, what are the potential second and third order consequences, right? So it's kind of a, an exercise to do that. I get to, you know, help, you know, viewers do it, swimmers, um, coaches. You can start, you know, helping your kids become higher level thinkers. Um, and it translates into business too, big time, right? Because obviously with his case he was using blackmail of them doing heinous things to uh create business opportunities for himself and i think that's a very important thing to realize is that there's good businessmen and bad businessmen right ethically good ethically bad and then good and bad right now a bad businessman like someone who sells a crap product a scammer right good businessman sells a good product that actually helps people to where they want to pay for the service because it's giving them what they determine is worth more than what they're spending, right? Um, like food, right? I'm willing to pay crazy inflation prices because it's what I get from that is not dying, which is way better than what I pay, right? So another thing is having vested interest in things, right? Like, so he obviously, bad businessman, used blackmail to create a vested interest with people to serve himself right i think that's not a it's not a it's not a great all right on the blackmail side it's not a great way to do business at all now on the side of doesn't hurt you like what they do actually it probably does hurt them because they're not really looking for the best deal in the market they're just giving it to p diddy but anyway doesn't hurt them hurts or helps p diddy i don't think it's not the i excuse me ideal way to do business um, I'd say with maybe decision making in everyday life, like if I'm going to do something for myself. I don't want it to hurt people. Right. I don't want it to affect people negatively. Um, I think doing things and it affects people negatively. I think that's bad. I think the best opportunities are good for you. Good for them. Right. I try to stay on doesn't affect them or affects them in a positive way or doesn't affect me, affects them positively. Uh, I try and stay in that realm of decision making right so anyway it was kind of like all three of those decision making and in, in life and in business um being an intelligent thinker and then just my curiosity about like what's going on and the implications of his arrest so we're gonna dive into it once again shout out to melanie king i'll put her content in the uh description below so let's dive into this like i said 10 minute video we'll stop through it let's see what's popping It ain't just P. Diddy that's in trouble with all of this. Because he's in a world of trouble. He's in a world of trouble. But that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about Hollywood being in a world of trouble. Well, guys, it has started. We have a top level. So there we are right there, right? Second order thinking. Like, okay, P. Diddy's in trouble. So who all is connected to P. Diddy that he might have dirt on? Right. And how does this affect these companies, these organizations, whatever he's involved in, right? Because one, you know, stock market, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, second, third order, order uh, level consequences. Music executive that has suddenly quit 
stepped down the day that Diddy was indicted. I did a video earlier where I um, played Stephen A. Smith uh, talking about how Hollywood is scared, music executives are scared, the music industry is uh, you know, very terrified of what's gonna come out of this indictment. But also he um, spoke with an Entertainment Tonight attorney who confirmed the same thing. They mentioned Epstein, it was just a lot to it. Please check out that video on my channel. I'll try to remember to link it below. But in the last part of that um, video, that interview, I did not play that. Any names to this. All I'm doing is reading the news, ladies and gentlemen, at this particular point and giving you my thoughts based off of the news. Ooh, almost messed up again. So not that it's not serious or that we didn't know it wasn't serious. But yeah, without bail, so he's a flight risk. He can't really do anything right now if, as far as being a danger to the community. So this is more of like, a, you've been a danger community. We gave you a chance. Like, we, we gotta get you up out of here now, player. But um, yeah, he's about to do some snitch. I'm like, there, if, you know, they're saying like, hey, like, yeah, heads about to roll. This is the kind of stuff that I was alluding to when I said we need the, Hollywood's in trouble. Hip hop, R&B, the music industry. I'm not talking about actors and actresses. I'm talking about Hollywood in terms of the music industry. It's in a world of trouble right now because you don't know whose name is attached to P. Diddy and you don't know where the dominoes are going to fall. You see where R. Kelly with his pedophile ass self you know, was being pursued by law enforcement, by prosecutors and what have you. It was just him. It was just him. There might have been some people who knew or thought or heard or whatever the case may be, but they wanted him. Okay? I think that's an important point to make. I didn't know that. I didn't know a lot. Of, I don't know a lot of stuff, man. Like, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that when it was going down, I was so neck deep in getting my business uh, to, to run and not being in poverty, living with, you know, mice and rats. But yeah, I guess. All right. So if they went after him, so I think this is a big thing you got to think about too, with stuff like this. Um, he has bosses, right? So now, you know, second order thinking, it's like, like uh, Stephen A just said, like, who does he have blackmail on? You know, does he have blackmail where somebody above him told him to do this? You know, so now, especially if this is FBI involved, that opens an investigation into higher ups. And I spent a lot of time, I think something else, this is a fourth point that's interest, that uh, interests me about this, is I study a lot of, for lack of a better term, white power structures, right? Now, not white power, like white or power structures that are predominantly ran by white people, right? So... Um, Shmuminati, mafia, Italian mafia, uh, taxes, um, but not taxes in terms of like that, but like from money printing to the businesses to people, and then taxes to move that money back to the people who own the fed and politician like it's just interesting seeing how all this stuff is connected hundred dollar handshakes blackmail like and i think you know all these systems i think anything good or bad should be studied because all you can do you just switch it up make it for good right instead of doing a hundred dollar instead of doing blackmail incentivize somebody like a hundred dollar handshake i think that's probably fine like if i gotta pay someone a hundred dollars to push for a product that's going to help people is that bad? No, they made some money and more people are going to be helped. Um, there's definitely bad ways to do that, right? Like a hundred dollar handshake for you to sell out your country. Like, hey, 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 hey. that's bad business. But yeah, it's just interesting, like observing these things because you can learn a lot about the world, business, friendships. You'll be surprised, like a lot of this stuff. Like, you'd be like, why are people playing favorites? Like, It may not be money involved. It may be a board seat involved. It may be 
um, favoritism involved. Like it may be hooking somebody up with like free grades or getting them into schools or this athlete doing better makes me as a coach look good. So I ain't really caring about the other athletes. Like when you start seeing the systems of power, it's very interesting to like when you start seeing it pop up in other places in your life, right? Like what is saying Harry Potter defense against the dark arts? You ain't really in there learning the dark arts to be a mass murderer. You're in there learning the dark arts to defend yourself. And if you don't understand what your enemy is capable of, you can't defend yourself. So it's just very interesting watching this stuff and learning from it. You know, all types of evil in the world. They wanted him. When you look at P. Diddy, it almost seems clear. It's not just him thereafter. These are RICO charges. This is an indictment. It's Homeland Security. Homes raided in Los Angeles and Miami. Computers and laptops and iPads and phones and surveillance videos and, and, and stuff like that. That's something else. Let's see. Where's this? Okay, it's gone. That's something else that's important, right? So if they have the videos, they really don't need him, right? They only really need Diddy if he knows things that aren't on the videos, right? So that would be if somebody above him. This is something the second order thinking right so he's arrested who does he who can he trip on right or give up well in this one avenue right they need him to give up people but they already have all the videos so they don't need him for that anymore so he has less moves which means they're looking for stuff that or they only need him if he can give them stuff that they don't have access to already and they have access to everything so you see what i'm saying so now it's like okay well I'm sure he has something to bargain. What does he have to bargain with, right? So, third order thinking. Oops. Confiscated. They did that in May. You're talking about months later, and here they come with this indictment, and they're trying to make it so to, they want him behind bars today. Not next week, not next month, not when the trial begins. On this day, when P. Diddy is walking into a courtroom in New York to plead not line on TMZ, on Tuesday, Lyle sent a company memo. Hmm. So if he doesn't, what the heck? So... I think something that is important because there's definitely, you know, at this, at that level of fame and money, there's people who know how to keep them, themselves off cameras, right? So, yeah, he definitely has got some chips to trade. Announcing his resignation as chairman and CEO of Warner Brothers 300 Electra Entertainment Chairman, passing the torch to some seasoned vets. The next paragraph, ladies and gentlemen, here's what it says. Lyle's has been with Warner since 2004, which formerly housed Diddy's Bad Boy Records. And he's been vocal defending the mounds of allegations against Puffy. That's what it said. So it's not me talking. Every time I've met Kevin Lyle, has been incredibly nice to me. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. What I do know is that they're attaching his name See what I'm saying? Se second, third, I think he's probably on what, fourth? It's still third level. It's just like another. We know that, right? We know that the, they, uh, they need him for stuff that they don't need, right? So that's second level. So he's still on another level of third order thinking. Um, this guy's attached to it, right? So he has connections that they don't know that aren't on because these people, they're smart people who are helping Diddy do all this dumb stuff. And there's this guy. Right, so we have two clues. And it's like some of this stuff, like figuring it out, like exercising your mind, it's fun because it's just a game, right? It's like, it's clue. You know, it's, uh, what's it? Uh, Cohen Old Green in Room Blue with the, the uh, <laughs> with the chandelier. You know what I'm saying? P. Diddy. 
And they're doing so on the day that he resigned. And they're showing you the connection between him and Bad Boy Entertainment. You know why they're doing that? Because it's a glimpse of what's coming. There's a whole bunch of names. Y'all guess it. I ain't going to put out no polls. I'm not going to put a poll out there and ask you and give you names and multiple choice. I'm not doing that to other human beings. Only reason I read Kevin Lyle's name is because of the TMZ. Puffy, P. Diddy, Sean P. Diddy Combs, Sean Diddy Combs. Think about the artist he's represented, who's worked under his label. I'll say this too, because I remember this. Um, Y'all don't know who Mace is. Uh, I remember he had that, um, the more problems we come across, the more, the more money, whatever it is, more money, more problems, right? With uh, B.I.G., and like I was real young when that song came out, but I knew, you knew you heard it. And I remember like Mace, he just like disappeared. And um, I remember he eventually like hearing about him because he almost got signed with uh, Fifty Cent and G Unit. And at that time he was called like uh, Pastor Mace. And I was just like, what? Like how do you go from this guy with the uh, jumpsuit with the foiled aluminum foil jumpsuit to Pastor? Right, the peak of the game with P Diddy, you know, hanging best friends, one of best friends with a uh, Biggie, and you leave all of that that you've been working on in your life for for to be a pastor. Like that's a crazy. Not that being a pastor is bad, but it's just a crazy change. Like what facilitates something like that? I remember thinking that when I was like a kid, and just being like, that's really odd. Like what has to happen to you to be like, I don't want any of this fame. I need Jesus, <laughs> right? So that's just something I always kept in the back of my mind. Like, that's kind of odd. And P. Diddy, like, he's always got this weird energy. That was always too. I always thought about that too. Like, weird eye contact. <laughs> like, have you ever been around, like, hood dudes? Like, street guys? Not that I've been around, like, real street guys. But the, I'd say the people who were, like, hood dudes that I knew. Not in Round Rock. For, like, other places. Like, playing sports, travel teams, and basketball. Um, and some swim meets. <laughs> they, they, you don't see them a lot, but they out there. Um, and then like the hood dudes in Round Rock, they had a lot of similar behaviors. Like I'd say it was more of a mask, but the the mat like the front face was the same. And they behave a certain way. And the way I don't know P Diddy's background, like two family home, rich. I don't know what that is, um, or poor. But, like, to be successful and you're black and if you're from, like, that type of environment, a street environment, you become, you don't behave the way Diddy behaved. So I remember thinking about that, too. I was like, this guy's weird. But, you know, he's P. Diddy, you know, Sean John. <laughs> I actually have this clone. It's crazy. It's called Unforgivable, which is a crazy thing <laughs> to think about now because it is unforgivable. But, yeah, it's just... You know, some things I always remember thinking about when I was a kid. Do your own homework. And so th that right there, that tells you, I mean, I, you, if you haven't seen the video that I did with Stephen A. Smith that I, I, I reviewing this, you're going to want to see it. I also did another video today where TMZ themselves confirmed that Hollywood is scared. There are more heads that are going to roll. TMZ is confirming that. Okay. There's an interview that they did and they talk about that, how this is going to blow up huge. Okay. And this is why Hollywood is silent. So now I'm going to take you to Kevin Lyles in this exact article that he's talking announcing his resignation as chairman and CEO of Warner Music 300 Electra Entertainment Chairman. Post, I'm sure it's a bunch of fluff about how grateful he is defending the mounds of allegations against Puff. Of course, the biggest music industry news of the day is Diddy and his indictment. Um, it says, we spoke to Kevin. That, my friends, is called orders from up high. Whoever is the 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 big boss or pulling the strings, because if he's being mentioned this much, he knew, right? But before that, he was against the feds. The feds don't miss, <laughs> okay? There's Steph Curry in the fourth quarter at the Olympic Games for the, in the gold medal game, okay? And so 
and a guy of this stature, he has to know that the feds don't miss and he's defending it, right? So somebody said like, hey, you're sacrificed, bro. Get on up on that chopping block and defend him, right? So that's just interesting. I think something that's also interesting is what Diddy is going to do because is he being, you know, some like the big homies sacrificing him too or is Diddy going to be, nah. And that's the thing I say about like studying these power structures because a lot of this stuff is the same. It's like a similar, very, very similar playbook as um, Schmepstein, right? And uh, Jelaine. And it's not the same, but it's like, it's like his version of it, right? And that's why I say it's interesting seeing how people, like you study power structures, you can see how people will copy something, but they'll like make it their own, right? Because that's the game. You, you watch film and then you make the game your own, how it works for you. So... Yeah, a lot of, it's just, it's interesting studying this stuff. Back in April, and he told us he never knew the Diddy, the, he never knew the Diddy who got plastered in the media after all the allegations made in numerous lawsuits and stuck by him. They even have dot, dot, My. dot, and stuck by him. Sir, really? You want us to believe you don't know the puff like that. We know the puff like that. And we haven't even been around the man. We've seen him. We've seen how he acts. Just go look at the old reality shows. The man is a menace. The man is in. Oh man, yo, I forgot about the reality TV shows. Yeah, puff was a menace on some of those reality TV shows. Oh man. Yeah, like. <sighs> You know, obviously, I was a kid when I used to watch all those shows, like Making the Band. But yeah, they used to say some, like, in some of the, I remember some of the reviews after that, like when they'd interview the uh, participants in the reality TV show, they'd be like, Puff was on some weird stuff. Right? They wouldn't say what, but they'd be like, his demands of the band were like, like, I don't know if they said they were like this level of stuff, but they were definitely like, you know, like, we can't do that. Like, we literally don't have the ability to do that. Like, he's just a weird. Weird dude. But yeah, it's just interesting she said that. Like, we've seen the shows. Like, yeah, Puff was weird in those shows. Not like this weird, but he was definitely different. Insane. The man is a criminal and a degenerate. Lau's transition will happen at the end. You know what? I immediately take that back. Because when Dave Chappelle's making fun of him, he was saying a lot of crazy stuff. Which means that Puff saying crazy stuff is something that's true. Because you know what they say in comedy? There's always a little bit of truth, so... I, I take that back. Puff was wilding. A month and sources close to the situation tell us his exit could directly be tied to a massive shakeup at Warner of Atlantic Music Group. So Elliot Grange, okay, I didn't even I didn't even get into this. Let's let's click this Elliot Grange. Okay, so um I guess oh, this is who okay, so the son is married to Sophia Ritchie. So his father, his father, okay, is um, Elliot Grange is the executive, but Lucian Grange is the son who has decided, who has stepped up. Oh, sorry. Lucian Grange is the father and Elliot Grange is the son. So let me see if I, what I can find on Elliot Grange, because I did not thought of stepping down Elliot. Oh, sorry. They got to Like, I'm not trying to be funny. Some people just got that. Yeah, he did it face. Glasses, man. I don't know how these, these people are that out of touch that they don't know, like, oh, man, I look like um, I'm in cahoots with P. Diddy if I look like this. What's going on? That's and it's shaking it up. Elliot Grange moving up. OK, so let me go down. Warner Music has announced dramatic changes in its recorded music operations. And let me just show you when this came out. This is August 1st of this year. OK, um, Max Lusada, pictured above CEO of recorded music and 20 year veteran of the company, will step down at the end of the fiscal year, although he will remain as an advisor through January 31st, 2025, probably due to a contract. They can't just let him go. Um, and it's talking about other people, but then let me get here. Effective October 1st, Elliot Green reporting to happening with the music industry. There's quietly don't want to be part of an indictment. They will say that's the former person and they have nothing to do with it now, but we know. Yeah. 
So second and third are the thing. It's just always interesting to study these things because, I mean, obviously Diddy's a terrible person, but um, in terms of getting the things he wanted using a system like this that obviously we can see straight out of the playbook of like an Eps, of a Schmepstein and Ghislaine. How do I say this the right way? The systems to getting what you want leave and getting it um, leaves clues. All right now, I think it's up to you to do it the right way. Like I said, be a good businessman. All right, be a good person. You know, do these things in ways that you know either don't hurt people and help you, or don't negatively affect people and help you, or do both, or don't affect you and help others. All right, so yeah, it's just interesting to see. You know. How if you exercise second order and first order, you know, first, second, third, you know, high IQ thinking, you can predict a lot of stuff and you can get to the truth pretty easy and figure out and predict things very quickly. I think it's a big part of leadership. Like you got a kid and you know their personality. You can guess like, okay, this kid's prone to this, 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 this. If this happens, they're going to react this way. If I can get that reaction, I can turn them into a great swimmer, right? So, um, and then being able to coach it, right? coach them out of some NPC behavior. So, you know, that's it for uh, today. You know, we got the first stream done. Like I said, we had disaster on the um, first one back in last week. Uh, Tuesdays will be kind of like this, like, you know, fun days, talk about whatever. I'm not going to say fun days, but just pop culture, I guess is the right word. Whatever's going on in the world, let's talk about it. Let's be, let's be normal people. Let's be swimmers talking about some normal people stuff. Okay. We ain't got to, that's why I say about like the future of the sport. Like swimmers only talk about swimming. I bet you when they bite with their homies, they don't talk about only swimming. And that's what I'm saying. Like these, you can't be a robot and think the sport that's where we're trying to convince, get people, the normal populace excited about watching people watch a black line fast. <laughs> you got to do better. So, you know, we only the way. Thank you for tuning in guys. Make sure you like, and subscribe, share, send it to somebody. Um, send it to somebody who's trying to change the game of swimming. You know, let them know it's okay. Hey, pop your shit, talk yourself up, walk it, and if you fail, come back for Mo. You only gotta win once to be right. Um, but yeah, we're gonna change this game. Peace, guys.